Okay, now that I've loaded up my multi-layer EXR, you can see over in our layers panel we have our beauty on top and all the other AOVs rendered alongside with it. And you can see all these here. Now I want to know um, if you are running into issues loading these EXRs into Photoshop, I am using a free plugin known as EXR-IO and this should resolve any issues you are having. And before I get started, we want to make sure that we're working in 32-bit. As you can see here we are, because by default we loaded up a 32-bit image. So that's the mode we're going to be working with inside of Photoshop. And the reason we're using 32-bit is not only does it have the um, largest range for us, it also is going to allow Photoshop to do all the math in a linear manner when we're adding these passes on top of each other. So let's actually go ahead and um, rename this to beauty. Let's start actually organizing our layers real quick. And let's create a new group and we'll call this custom AOV. And we're basically gonna throw all the AOVs that we don't need to rebuild our beauty into here. So we're gonna need AO custom one. Um, we'll throw the puzzle mat in there even though it's not a custom AOV. We're still gonna throw it in there. Um, RS logo one and the user data custom onto the custom AOV folder. Let's go ahead and hide this for now. And let's go ahead and start reordering our AOVs to rebuild our beauty. So we have our beauty on top and we'll hide this for now. So we'll have it for reference later. So let's drag our diffuse lighting to the bottom. And let's have the GI on top. Then let's have the subsurface scattering. Then the specular, whoops. The specular, reflections, refractions, emission, volume lighting, then caustics. And what we'll do is we'll hide all these for now. So we have the diffuse lighting on bottom and we'll just keep this at default. We won't be adjusting the uh, layer options, but we will we'll enable the GI and we'll be adding this on top. And we'll be adding each layer on top of each other. So the GI, subsurface scattering, specular lighting. And if we outputted all the correct AOVs in a correct manner, this should result in a basically a one for one result of our beauty pass. And we'll be comparing those in a second. So we're just adding all these layers on top of each other. And as you can see, we'll just do a comparison and I'll even zoom in um, and we'll compare this to the beauty. And as you can see, you know, we're getting a basically a one for one result. Now, it's not going to be a one for one down to the exact pixel as the way the AOVs are clamped or the way the beauty is clamped and the way the AOVs are clamped. They are different in like the super whites areas, but you know, um, to the eye, you know, you can't tell a difference between, and I'm enabling and disabling the beauty and you can see, you know, you can't tell the, uh, any difference. So what this allows us to do is, and I'm just going to go ahead and disable our beauty for now is we've separated all the elements in our scene. So I'm able to disable subsurface scattering in, in my image. I'm able to disable volume lighting in my image, uh, disable caustics, you know, um, I'm, I'm able to do whatever I want now on a per um, element level. So um, better yet, what I'm going to be able to do is adjust these um, on a global basis. And so, and I'll show you what I mean by that is, so we have our subsurface scattering level or a layer. And because we only have one object with subsurface scattering, we don't need any type of mask to adjust this. So I'm going to add an exposure layer. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hold down alt and in between the two layers, I'm going to left click and this makes this a clipping mask. And I'm going to be using a lot of shortcuts uh, during this part of the video. And I'll make sure to um, describe each shortcut I'm using just so you don't get lost. So we have this exposure layer applied to the subsurface scattering and we can just start adjusting the exposure. We can raise it a little bit and we'll lower the gamma a bit to add some contrast. And we'll actually compare this to the beauty and you can see the difference that it's making, you know, it's just brightening that up. And it's almost like that we've changed the material, but without having to re-render. And you'll start to slowly realize the power of AOVs by the end of this video. So let's start making some more adjustments. So the adjustments I'm making right now is for everything in the entire scene. And I'll be showing you how to adjust certain elements in our scene using custom AOVs in a bit. So we have our specular layer. So let's add an exposure again, clipping mask. 
And what we can do is, you know, we can almost make sh we can make it seem like the specular is stronger than it actually is by adjusting this exposure. And you can see it. And I'll actually, um, whoops, I'll actually zoom in right here and just show what I'm talking about. So we have it at default. And as I start to slowly raise this exposure, it's making it appear as the lights are almost brighter in our scene, but they're not. And the same effect is I can lower the exposure to make them seem dark darker than they actually were. So let's actually, yeah, we're going to um, lower that effect just a tiny bit. And you can see that effect is having on the entire scene in the, in the uh, specular. And we can do the same for the reflections, because why not? Let's add another exposure, add a clipping mask, and let's, we can even brighten this up. Now we don't want to do it too much, actually, just a tiny bit. And you can see the effect that is having, especially on this very reflective sphere, just brightening it up a tad and on the edges of our other sphere. Um, we can actually, let's play with the emission. So let's add another exposure adjustment to the emission. And say we want to bring some of the color back to this, well, we can actually lower the exposure a bit to get some more of that blue coming back. And that should be good. And these are just all um, pretty slight adjustments that we're making just to improve our image. Um, at the same time, we can adjust the volume lighting as well. So let's add another exposure adjustment. And as you see, as I start to raise ex this exposure, it's making it seem as it's almost the, the fog is getting thicker. Now, you know, we don't want to do it too much because you know, that's not very pleasing to look at. But we can raise this up quite a bit to give that effect. And we'll lower the gamut just a bit. And we actually can change the color of the fog if we want to. So let's add a hue and saturation level or layer and we're going to make a clipping mask and we'll do colorize and we'll make it look like the fog from the newest blade runner we'll try to at least boost the saturation and that's good and as you can see you know we're affecting all these different elements that are making up our scene or making up our beauty um, in individual parts so if we compare the beauty to what we've now made you know, it's almost like a completely different image now. And I'll just um, enable and disable this beauty so you can see what's actually happening. Yeah, it's like we've almost rendered out an entire new image, but we're not. We're doing this all in post. So now let's take a look at the custom AOVs now. So if we go into our custom AOV folder, let's take a look at our RS logo first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to control left click inside of this box next to the RS logo to select the entire canvas. And I'm going to control C to copy and then control D to deselect this selection. And we're going to close this group. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a hue and saturation level or a layer. I keep saying level hue and saturation layer. And I'm going to alt left click inside of the layer mask thumbnail. So I can directly affect this layer mask and I'm going to control V, which is paste the um, custom AOV we copied earlier. And once again, control D to deselect. And now what we can do is, is I'll make this full screen or I'll zoom in. We can now start adjusting the color of our Redshift logo. And we'll do like a purple. We can raise the saturation, lower this. Yeah, and you can see that effect that it's having. And you can see how powerful this can be inside of posts. You know, say you have a client last minute wants to change the color of a label or a logo or, you know, whatever it is. We're able to do this without having to re-render our entire image. And even though we are in post, we do want to keep this as physically accurate as possible. So right now we have this hue and saturation level over our entire or, or over all of our AOVs. Sorry, that's a mouthful. So what we actually only want to change is the diffuse layer and the GI la um, layer. Not all the, you know, um, reflection, specular, and all that stuff. Even though this um, material doesn't have a ton of reflection and specular, um, we just want to keep this as physically accurate as possible. So let's drag this layer down to the diffuse lighting. And we're going to make, once again, a clipping mask. And we're going to control J to copy this layer. And we want it to affect the GI as well. And once again, make a clipping mask. And as you can see, we've changed the color of this logo now. 
let's take a look at some other custom AOVs we created. So let's just go to the uh, user data custom one. And this was the custom AOV that we assigned to different objects in our scene. Once again, I'm going to control click, control C to copy, or to copy this layer, control D to deselect, hide the folder. Let's create an exposure level. Once again, alt left click to adjust the layer mask, control V to copy this. And now we can adjust the exposure levels of those objects in our scene. This is the random objects we selected. Now, so I start to make these brighter. That's a little bit too bright. As I start to make these brighter, remember I, how I said earlier in the video that this custom AOV isn't taking into account of the refractiveness of this other object. So you can see the image starts to, um, it starts to break the image basically. Well, remember that we're going to take a look at our puzzle map in a second to how to work around this or how we can work around this. So let's actually, we're going to just go ahead and delete this because this, um, this AOV is pretty much useless to us. Um, as it's because it's not affecting the refractiveness. So we're going to delete this and we're going to take a look at our puzzle map right now. So let's open Let's actually take this out of the group and let's open up this puzzle map. And now remember I talked about earlier in the video, we can look at the channels of our puzzle map and directly grab these red, green, and blue um, channels and use them as masks inside of Photoshop. So if we look at the red. You can see that this was our backdrop that we assigned the uh, red ID to the backdrop. And as you can see, it's taking an account for the reflection of all our materials. So because even though we only assigned it to our backdrop, this metal ball was reflecting our backdrop. So it's that that's taking into account for our um, our red, um, basically red channel. So what I'm going to do is almost the same as before. I'm control clicking inside of this red channel to select all this. And all I'm going to do is go back to the layers panel and I'm going to create a new hue and saturation. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this puzzle map. And now, as you can see, now that we have this selected, oops, let me hide this custom AOV um, group. And now, as you see, I can start adjusting the color of our backdrop. Now, remember, we just want it to, we want to keep this as physically accurate as possible. So we want it to take this down to the diffuse lighting level and the GI level. So remember, um, what I'm going to do is, so we're just gonna slightly be adjusting this. So we're gonna make this a, almost like a purple. We'll go a little bit more, almost like a purple. And remember, we're going to copy this and drag this into our GI level as well. And if we compare this back to our, um, our beauty, you can see that we've completely changed the color of the backdrop. So let's go back into our puzzle map and take a look at one more channel. So remember the green channel, which we assigned to the Taurus. And once again, you know, we had the refract slash reflect IDs um, option enabled. So it's taking into account to everything it's refracting and reflecting. So once again, we're going to control left click, go back to our layers and create a hue and saturation. We're going to hide this puzzle map. And if we start if we start adjusting, um, actually we'll do a colorize and we can start adjusting the color of this torus. We'll raise the saturation up. You can see we've effectively, we're changing the color um, of our entire torus and where it's refracting as well. And if we just full screen this for a second, and we'll drag this down. You can see if we compare this back to our beauty, you know, we've completely changed. This is almost an entirely new scene now that we've made. Now, all these changes I've made are pretty drastic. Um, usually inside of um, post, you know, you're not going to be doing this big of changes. But um, I'm just showing you the power of, you know, these simple AOVs we've outputted and just, you know, spending a few minutes adjusting inside of Photoshop the results we can get. So if you put some serious time um, into an actual scene, you know, you can actually have lots of control over everything in your scene. So we'll compare that one more time. You know, it's, it's, and you can see right here, we've effectively changed the reflection that our torus, uh, the reflection in the sphere that our torus is emitting, as you can see. And that's the power of the puzzle map, to be honest. Um, one of my personal favorites. So this concludes using AOVs inside of Redshift for Cinema 4D and comping them inside of Photoshop. 
We looked at writing custom AOVs based on the shaders in our scene and based on the objects in our scene as well. There was a lot of information in this tutorial, so I hope everything was easy for you to follow along and understand. Make sure to subscribe for more tutorials with Redshift and Cinema 4D.